Hello everybody and welcome to another Pokepunk devlog. You'll might notice today I've been I have, I have graced you with a keyboard cam or uh, and also a controller cam. Um, one of the things I get asked a lot about uh, in the game comes up a lot on stream and so on is uh, what platforms I'm planning to bring the game to. Um, you know, am I bringing the game to Switch or PS4 or any of those things? And uh, my answer has been pretty consistent throughout development, and that is that the game is a PC game first. I'm going to be bringing it to Windows. PC before anything else, just because that's <laughs> ultimately what's most convenient for me. It's the the device I have that I'm working on that I have, you know, that I can develop very easily for, um, and uh, you know, just just hoping to finish the game at all on one platform, you know, um, is is a big enough goal. <laughs> so, but I would, of course, like to bring it to as many platforms as possible. Obviously, like you know, there's no reason why I don't think it could be a good game um, on various different platforms. Um, but one of the difficulties with that um, is pad controls for this game. It's a very unique, weird game. Um, you, you know, it's primarily designed with keyboard and mouse in mind. You know, because I made it as a jam game, and I was just thinking, right, well, we have keyboard and mouse. What fun things can we do? And we've got this spear that is aimed with the mouse and used with the mouse, and we've got a character that is controlled with the keyboard, typically. And that's just like the most natural. Um, uh, thing that occurred to me for designing and playing it and so on. Um, translating that to a pad? Actually quite tricky. Um, but I have done so, because I want, even though I'm coming to PC first, um, I do want people to be able to play with a pad, as a lot of people prefer to use pads just to play games. It's just a, you know, it's just something people prefer. Um, so you'll notice the game does work on pad. Um, by default, uh, you move with the left stick, you aim the spear with the right stick, and that's that's pretty much all there was to it right away when I, when I started this off, you can you know, jump, um, and so on, um, and then you've got like stab uh, on uh, RB, um, you can hold RT to throw, you can you know, jump with A, um, you can also jump now, I think this is a, a newer thing with the, by pushing in the left stick, because this is the tricky thing, is unlike like a twin stick shooter, for example, that works quite well with this dynamic of aim one thing with left stick, aim other thing with right stick, um, the problem is you need to be able to do other stuff as well, <laughs> um, quite a lot of the time, like jumping and stabbing, sometimes, like, simultaneously, and you only have so many friggin' fingers, right? So trying to, like, aim the spear in a certain direction, run and jump, when jump by default is just like, I want to do this A button on the, the face, <laughs> you know, a face button, you know, uh, I have the option of moving jump to, like, one of the back buttons, which is not entirely great, putting it on left stick, which is how it works at the moment, which is kind of okay, but still feels kind of weird, um, and, and, and generally it just means, like, just, like, the, the amount of precise, like, stuff you have to do in this game, like, you, you really don't want to be battling with your controls too much, they want to feel as natural and as fluid as possible, um, so really the, just, like, throwing the buttons on whatever you can reach or whatever wasn't really going to be enough for me for this game in order to get it to feel nice and feel as close as it can to being the same experience, like on controller as it is on um, keyboard and mouse. Um, I'm never going to get there perfectly, it's never going to be perfect, they're just fundamentally very different controls, um, systems, and the game is going to feel a bit different. Uh, depending which one you're going to use, and my goal really is to try and minimize that as much as possible because I, you know, it's hard enough to design one game, you know, with one scope of difficulty, one kind of like uh, progression uh, and difficulty curve, without like also having to account for this control scheme that completely changes how the game feels to play, which is. You know, this game suffers more from that than a lot of games do. Um, it just it just completely changes the feel. Um, I imagine FPS games, honestly, like I imagine designers actually kind of struggle with this a little in how different it feels. Not necessarily better or worse, but just how different the feel is when you go from using a controller to uh, using the keyboard and mouse, um, the different strategies it tends to prefer, and so on. Um, so you know, I relate a lot to that struggle. Uh, <laughs> But, um, but I'm doing my best to find ways to fix it, so I'm going to just talk a little bit about some of the things I have done um, to try and help, like, kind of find that parity and how well how well I think it's kind of worked. Um, so one of the things you may have already noticed seeing me run around here is that um, without even touching uh, this right stick, um, just by pressing left and right, um, the spear actually aims wherever I'm moving. So, I mean, obviously I can only actually move the character left and right, but I can also kind of control quite uh, precisely the, the angle of the spear. Um, now that's really cool because in simple jumping and climbing situations, that actually frees up my thumb to be able to press other buttons. So I can actually use that 
um, like face button for jumping, which is just a really comfortable button and just you know, it feels right at home for all kind of platforming kind of thing, makes it feel natural, Mario-like even, you know, just jumping and, and then grabbing and swinging along with this. And obviously, yeah, you can swing back and forth though with this while you're on there. You, um, kind of like re-aim where you're going to go next, even without, again, without even using the other stick, just be like, okay, I'm going to grab there, and then like, okay, I'm going to grab like there, and then so on. You can actually be quite precise with it. It's pretty good. Um, it doesn't, it's not useful for everything. Um, I'm going to break out of here just real quick. Also, we've got this lock-on mechanic um, that's helpful. So you can see like this little circle has appeared around here. It doesn't look as good in the new version at the moment, actually. <laughs> this has one of the few things that looks slightly cleaner in the demo, uh, the currently existing demo. So um, it only needs a little bit of work to catch back up because uh, just the, the circle is uh, the, basically in the demo. There's a line connecting the spear to whatever it's locked onto or whatever you're aiming at with the throw. That line isn't in this version, um, so it can look a little bit weird to be locked onto something. It's hard to sort of tell, um, but nonetheless, there is a lock-on thing. So relevant things like buttons and so on that you just need to be able to like hit precisely because it's just really hard. Um, like doing like this, like just because like just moving the thumb, just even that tiny bit can move you by quite a lot. Um, and, and no amount of like correct dead zoning or whatnot is really helping get that right. Just because the, especially the further away you aim, the further away you aim, obviously the more like each just sort of micro movement is actually a huge amount of like change in where you're aiming. And obviously when you're using the mouse, you just you just literally hover the mouse over the thing you're aiming at. You don't have that problem. Aiming at nearby things is not so bad. Aiming at far away things, really big issue. So that's why the lock-on exists. I will make it toggleable. It's going to be on by default, but it will be a thing you can turn off if you really don't like it in your pad player. Um, but I think it's um, probably going to be really useful um, for just actually being able to hit things like that. This uh, method of just sort of aiming without having to use the other sphere is very useful. Um, very good for just basic climbing, basic situations. But you do every now and again, you need to use the manual aiming as well. So obviously it remains a thing. Um, specifically a situation like this, if you try to just sort of run off, hit that, like, oh, I actually did it. <laughs> um, you just have to believe me when I say that's really hard to do um, without um, manually aiming the spear, like just using that automatically, because you kind of rely, you have to be so quick. Like you have to, you, you generally rely on all the momentum that gives you and we rely on holding your character's momentum moving to the right um, in order to like have enough momentum to actually clear the gap which is added to by the spear bounce so like you generally aim that down behind you like this and you run and you hit that um see what the ghost kind of shows you you can see the ghost kind of aiming behind them it's like she runs up there and jumps over the gap so it is still necessary um oh the other thing with the lock on by the way is you can break the lock on if you're aiming at a thing and you just tap in um the stick button that breaks that Again, some of these controls are slightly unintuitive as well, so I'm trying to work out how I can teach you these things. Because I feel like there's more things you sort of need to know with the, the pad than you do with um, with mouse and keyboard. Like, for example, there is also a button. I don't know if I'm actually going to keep it or not, because I'm, I'm finding the uses less... I don't know, I, I, I very rarely... I, I forget it even exists. But there is a button that, like, reverses the direction uh, of your spear. So you can actually, I think, like, do that jump without using the stick if you just use the reverse. Yeah. You can run along, just use the reverse thing. Oh, I'm not very good at it because I've not used this in a while. Yeah. So there's this button on, on LT um, that just like aims the spear the opposite direction, and then you can just use sort of the auto aiming with just just the left stick um, that just aims the same way you're moving, and then you can use that to run over gaps. So there is that option. Um, but again, I'm like, how do I teach some of these things to the player? And I, I don't know. It's really tricky. But I'm, I'm relatively happy with just like this auto aiming thing with the left and right and the lock on, um, um, and uh, together with the ability to like manually aim when you need to. Um, I've basically there's nothing in the game I haven't been able to do on bad. Um, like I can do everything in the game. Some things feel harder. Some very few things actually feel easier just because you can keep the spear in a fixed direction like relative to the player much more easily than you can with the mouse because the mouse is absolute so if i go to the mouse now and it's just like a position on the screen like that you can see it kind of moves around a bunch because it's just a screen position rather than a room position i don't know if maybe i should even change that or try it in other ways but i'm very used to the way the game controls now so it's a tricky question but yeah like i, like I say the point is some things are actually slightly easier to do on pad and obviously it varies from person to person and so on and i know a lot of people like to say as well like you know ah controls you know if you practice long enough you can get good at any controller and like so that, that is partly true um but also in some ways it's just not true at all and so, yeah, there are just physical differences and limits with um different control schemes on, on, on what can be done and what's just going to feel just 
way different and just way harder on one system and way more um, doable on the other. I do think in this game now, it was something I struggled with a lot, something I thought, uh, this just isn't possible, they're just not going to feel good enough. I actually feel a lot better about it these days. That might just be me being really practiced with the game and being able to play okay on both and it's starting to feel natural. Um, it's tricky. Whenever I've taken the game and put it in front of playtesters, I've actually always generally made them play on pad because it's the harder control scheme and I kind of wanted to see my worst case scenario for a lot of things. I don't know if that was the right way to do it because I actually have a lot less now experience, playtest like experience, uh, seeing people just using mouse and keyboard. Um, my best experiences of that is seeing like the speedrunners and so on, which is not really a great like, you know, test case for, for a lot of different things. So it's tricky. I need to get a lot more people, uh, a, a lot more people in front of the game and, and, and watch and see how they they get to grips with the controls. Some people pick it up super quickly, even on controller. Some people just fly through it and they like they learn to use it really well. Um, and other people really struggle. Um, some people really like you know, um, as well as I say, I don't actually have that much experience seeing people play it on mouse and keyboard. Um, I've seen Emma, my girlfriend, try to play it and did not do very well uh, with the control scheme. And I'd say that the whole game is a weird control scheme. I've termed it expressive. I think that's a nice way to describe it. I think that's true. I think it does have a, a cool expressive control scheme. There's lots of different ways you can do things and so on. But yeah, that's um, that's where I'm at with controllers and controller parity at the moment. And hopefully that sort of explains a bit of my stance on different platforms as well. Um, I want to give as much choice and option to the player to play the game the way they want as possible while being able to control um, the experience and keep it as consistent as possible across both. There's only so much I can do for that, but I'm, I'm kind of doing my best, okay? If you've got any ideas on, on things like I might have not even considered in terms of like uh, controls and, and schemes and things like that, um, please do let me know. Uh, the other thing I should probably mention as well is, of course, everything's going to be rebindable. You're going to be able to like change your, your buttons and put them on different keys and so on and so forth. I'm using um, Juju Adams' input library at the moment for all of my controls, which we're... Is, is very helpful. It will make that stuff um, a lot easier. Um, so the foundation is kind of already there for me to do uh, various key rebinding and swapping and whatnot, um, which is very, very cool. Um, if you're wondering how to do that kind of thing in a game, please do check uh, check that library out. It's really, really good. Um, yeah, I uh, hope this was interesting to hear about. Uh, thank you all for watching. Um, people seem to be really enjoying these devlogs, so I plan to do as many more of them as I can. Um, I'm talking with my hands a lot now just because they're on the screen. I don't, I don't, I don't know why I do that, but I am. <laughs> Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll catch you all next time.